China is now setting to inoculate tens of millions. How safe and effective are the vaccines? Direct answer from the chief epidemiologist at the China Center for Disease and Control. Right after this, bring us the hope. The epidemic will. This is World Insight, the very first show of the year 2021 with me, Tian Wei. 2020 will forever be remembered as the year that the world came to a halt, crippled by the coronavirus pandemic. Almost no place has spared. At year's end, the promising vaccines offer a glimmer of hope amid a cresting second wave of contagion. China announced on Thursday that they had granted conditional marketing authorization for its first domestically produced COVID-19 vaccine. Chinese company Sinopharm has announced its vaccine as 79% efficacious. The vaccine has met WHO standards and was approved by the Chinese regulators. So how safe and effective is the vaccine? Could it be a lifesaver this winter for China? Or what about for the rest of the world? For answers to these questions, I talked to Wu Zunyou, who is the chief epidemiologist of the Chinese CDC. Let's listen in. Professor Wu, tell me more about how you look at the latest situation globally and where is China? So compare the epidemic uh, in the rest of the world and uh, China. So it's totally different picture. So if we take the global as a village, the global village, the epidemic straight forward to rise from a very beginning. The daily number of increased cases continue to increase, even reached 800 thousands in the past few days. So now the pandemic, it's reached the peak of the epidemic now and it will also continue in the next uh, uh, a few months. So this is already the peak? Almost reached the peak. So the tough time, it uh, will be uh, January. It will be January and uh, February. So after that, the, the epidemic will go to, uh, I think, the, bring us the hope. The epidemic will slow down. Uh, in the China, it's uh, uh, totally different. So epidemic is remain very, very low. We only have sporadic uh, local transmission with uh, small numbers imported cases. So uh, China situation is uh, much better. However, in the winter, it still have risk for the epidemic rebounds. So we still work hard to preventing important cases and also to prevent the epidemic caused by contaminated, contaminated cold chain food products and also other imported uh, cargoes. Mm -hmm. What about the China situation? Now we see a sporadic, uh, shall I say, cases rather than outbreaks, but we see quite resolute actions taken by the Chinese side, Chinese CDC, for example. Uh, are you worried that there will be further spread of the pandemic during the winter time? How fast do you think a vaccination will be available to the common Chinese if they want to have it? So for this winter, China, we do not have, I, I do not think we will have the big epidemic. So if we review the past 12 months, so except Hubei, so the, the largest epidemic after Wuhan, it, uh, uh, it happened in Xinjiang. So for this winter, I do not think China will have big epidemic. So the epidemic could, uh, I do not believe it will be beyond 1,000, the maximum. Oh, you've got a great number over there. Uh, so would we be able to travel during the holiday season? You know, Chinese Spring Festival with Chinese Lunar New Year is coming up in February. Can people still go back home if the situation were similar to what today is? 
I'm optimistic because everybody take action. That's most important. So I do not want people too optimistic, forgot to take action. So that's most important. Wherever you travel and whenever you travel, you must take all the action to protect yourself. That's most important. So for this coming winter, I think everybody needed to pay attention to the news where epidemic occurred or even the sporadic cases reported. So I do not encourage people travel to any places they have reported cases. So if there's no reported cases, you can travel, but be cautious to take action, wear a mask and uh, keep social distance and uh, try to eat as few as possible uh, in the travel time, particularly in the like uh, speed, uh, speed train or airplane. Mm. So if you take action, I think it should, it should be safe. Mm -hmm. Now, how big a danger is there during the winter time? Uh, how much do you think people need to make the effort? After all, even though China has been doing a great job, there has been certain level of fatigue, let's just say, facing the long a stretch of time of prevention and control. So how careful people really have to be in China? I think uh, review the past 12 months, uh, it approves uh, the public health uh, uh, prevention measures works like uh, mask wearing, social distancing, uh, hand washing, uh, all of this by combined together can control the epidemic. If all of these measures can be implemented at the same time, among everybody, the epidemic can be stopped. And also, we can prevent the resurgence of epidemic. So universal implementation is correct. the most important thing. That's correct. No exception. Right. The other thing people are very interested in knowing is how much vaccination will be able to help in terms of prevention and control, particularly short term. Professor Wu, I know you are looking at it from the epidemic perspective. Tell me more about that. Whether it is the vaccine in China or uh, other options uh, globally. I think vaccine provide a good hope and also provide a very important weapon to fight against COVID-19. Uh, however, that it will take time. The first, for each individual, for vaccination, it will take time to produce antibody to protect uh, uh, people who vaccinated. Uh, for uh, community, for the population, it take time to build up herd immunity. So in this winter season, I think we still heavily depend on public health measures. So uh, vaccine could be for long run but not for this winter. Mm. A lot of people have been thinking, hmm, should I have this kind of vaccine or should I have that kind of vaccine? As we have heard of vaccine candidates emerging from different parts of the world. So what advice would you give them? So there are different strategies to develop vaccines. However, all the vaccines, they have one common mechanism for protection that produce antibodies. So it doesn't matter which vaccine you choose, all vaccine can produce sufficient antibody against COVID-19 infection. So that's very important. Can we really trust the numbers, you know, as, as high as 94 or 95 percent efficacy and effectiveness? Uh, others' numbers uh, vary. Can we really trust those numbers? Because these vaccines are developed within a very short period of time, even though I know science has been developing very fast. Uh, I think uh, as long as the vaccine uh, provides uh, the protection over 70 percent, that's uh, good enough to control the epidemic from a population uh, point of view uh, thinking. For each individual, as long as you uh, take a va uh, vaccine, that will provide uh, protection. So all the vaccine will be uh, good enough for control the epidemic. 
WHO set a standard that is at least 50 percent. You are suggesting 70 percent will be sufficient for uh, prevention and control for the future. So these numbers, I'm sure people need to bear in mind. Having said that, though, what about vaccines from China? We've been hearing it for a long time, and there were sporadic reporting about uh, uh, effectiveness and efficacy numbers of the Chinese vaccines. So where are we now here in China? And how available are these vaccines? Uh, where can we get the numbers? Uh, right now, I think we have uh, one vaccine already finished the uh, phase three trial. Other two vaccines is in the final stage for the data analysis. Hopefully in the next uh, few weeks, the result will release to the public. You mean before the end of January? Probably. It depends on uh, how fast they get data analysis because all the uh, trial conducted in the other countries. So uh, you need to coordinate uh, how to get the data, how to analyze the data, and must be uh, follow the scientific protocol, uh, making sure all the results are valid and the result is uh, uh, reliable. Mm. The result, uh, the earlier I remember, was released by the Indonesian side, the latest number that I read. Uh, uh, many wonder whether the results should be coming from the Chinese side, the vaccine developers, or from the country where the vaccine has been developed, or has been tested, rather. No, you usually uh, uh, not uh, use the scientists working in the company produce vaccine to do the trial. They need to have an independent uh, scientific team to do a uh, clinical trial. And also, uh, even data analysis is another team that are making sure they are not biased. So all the information collected, all the information analysis, it's uh, by independent team. So they are uh, non-biased. The fully uh, according to the objective data uh, collected, observed. Some suggest it was about the, you know, the political system, the social system in different countries that would make a difference about which approach to take. But I'm sure as scientists, uh, you have different opinions because uh, there is, uh, it's not about politics really. It is really about how much lives can you save. Uh, tell me more, uh, Professor Wu, how do you see these approaches? One is uh, somewhat a gradual approach, uh, measured approach. The other is much more resolute approach, uh, such as that taken by China. So the strategy different from uh, different countries and also not just uh, the social system uh, by their value and uh, their social norm uh, will determine which strategy they think is the most appropriate. So com compare uh, what China did with what uh, did in uh, South Korea and Japan and other countries. So there are two broad category of strategy. One strategy, containment, it's uh, we concentrate all the resources in such a short time mm. to eradicate all the cases, make the society clean, no virus. Then the society could open, economic could reopen. That's what China did with Wuhan, for example. Right. Mm. Wuhan and other uh, small uh, outbreaks uh, uh, follow the Wuhan epidemic. And other countries may just use one or focus on one strategy, for example, uh, like uh, testing as the most important uh, uh, strategy used in the South Korea. Uh, by provide testing, then you have early detection. You can detect as much as possible. But that strategy cannot eradicate all the cases in the certain area in a certain period of time. Similar strategy like in the Japan. So that strategy. So the strategy used in South Korea and Japan, they are more tolerable and can be accepted to the most uh, for people, even like in the uh, Western countries. Mm -hmm. However, once the social factor, environment changes, for example, uh, the winter comes, the temperature becomes cold, 
and uh, people stay in the uh, house, the ventilation is not that good, then the epidemic, then resurgence. Very clear. Finally, what about vaccination? How fast, how efficient that could happen uh, to the Chinese citizens and to those uh, who are interested in getting the Chinese vaccines? I guess this takes a lot of things, uh, research to get the data, and then, of course, what kinds of uh, implementation campaign can we have, how fast they will produce, and how to distribute, and how to vaccinate, and who to vaccinate. These are all complicated issues. How is China looking at them? So the vaccine is uh, ready for uh, vaccination. However, so China will not depend on vaccine for this winter and the spring. So the the productivity or the volume can produced are uh, not enough for everybody to for vac vaccination. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine will be only for people at high risk group. For example, people working in the cold chain industry and working in the customer and uh, also in the airport mm -hmm. and uh, people work in the service industry. All of this at a high risk should be uh, at a priority to get a vaccination. Global governance has been having some problems, uh, and uh, COVID-19 certainly even exacerbate that process. Do you think things might get better soon? Uh, for example, the coming year, 2021. I think right now it's the toughest season for global against uh, COVID-19 right now, and we already see the hope, the vaccine, it uh, started to uh, use. And the vaccine bring hope to almost everybody. So given that hope, I think each country will willing to cooperate, to working together, to collaborate, to uh, coordinate, making sure we have a universal coordinated uh, program mm -hmm. against uh, COVID-19. Right now, each country do themselves. They close the door and they work uh, uh, themselves independently. So for control the global pandemic, each country need working together to have well coordinated. We hope WHO will take leadership to coordinate all the country working together to use vaccine and the use of public measures to combat the epidemic. Professor Wu Zunyou, Chief Scientist of China CDC, thank you so much. And also, thanks for the hard work of your colleagues at China CDC that all of us could enjoy this kind of free conversation face to face. Really appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, search World Insight or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. On behalf of the team, I'm Tian Wei. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.